Now, if your board is any dirtier than this, then once in a while you need to learn how to clean it. Because if you don't, one of these days that board is going to fail and you will not be able to use it for long. When people use boards that last for 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, 6 years and it's this dusty, then they are just very lucky. But if you maintain your board very well, you probably might be able to use it for like 7 years, 8 years. It depends on how well you're able to manage it. So in this video, I want you to stick around and then watch with me as we do a polish on this board. This is a dirty motherboard. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking if this is dirty, then what is yours? Well, that's precisely why I'm making this video because I want you to see what you're doing to your board when you don't clean it often. But to do that, let's observe a couple of things and why you need to clean your board regularly. So if you look at these connector pins right here, all these connector pins right here, you can see some dust at the bottom. Now, when that dust builds up, you then begin to see dust matter right on top of your board. Now, the danger with that is that when it builds up over a time, it begins to really harm your machine. So that's why in this video, I want to take you through the process of cleaning your board. And then show you what tools to use, how to do it, and every other thing. So I want you to stick around in this video because it's going to be quite enlightening and it's going to help you. Now, if your board is any dirtier than this, then once in a while you need to learn how to clean it. Because if you don't, one of these days that board is going to fail and you will not be able to use it for long. When people use boards that last for three years, four years, five years, six years, and it's this dusty, then they are just very lucky. But if you maintain your board very well, you probably might be able to use it for like seven years, eight years. It depends on how well you're able to manage it. So in this video, I want you to stick around and then watch with me as we do a polish on this board. Now, you're going to need a couple tools when it comes to cleaning your board. First and foremost, you're going to need this brush. This particular brush. I don't know what it's called in your country. You're going to need this. Right? Secondly, you're going to need a smaller brush like this. You'll see why we do that in a minute. Next to that, you're going to need... A toothbrush you can steal from your toothbrush if you like your machine that much but I'm just kidding buy one right and then next to that you're going to need fuel my country we call this petrol your country I don't know what you call it now some people have said they like to use things like acetone or alcohol well one of the reasons why I don't like acetone is because it's very strong and it does have a solvent capacity so it can peel up things and the other reason I don't like alcohol, which is uh, uh, methylated spirit, is because some of them distill into water. So if you don't uh, flush your board properly, or sorry, if you don't dry your board properly after the clean, you may have a residue of water on your board, which again can break your board. So you just have to be very careful. Whatever you choose, just make sure that your board dries up before you install it back on the machine. So in this video, I'm going to show you steps to take, what you should be careful of and stuff like that. So we're going to start with him, right? You carry this, you stick your brush into that liquid. They take it out like that. 
and make sure you drain it carefully enough and then you come to the board you start with a light brush on these surfaces like this remember what i was showing you earlier so this is a good time to actually zoom in to what it's really doing So now you can see that the legs of these pins were dusty prior to now. But now you can see that the legs are now cleaner. If you look at this, can you see the leg pins are now cleaner, more silvery. Unlike here, for instance, can you see the side as it's dirty? Now, unlike that, you can see that this is a lot cleaner, unlike the other side. And then you can see residue of dust on top of that board. Can you see that? Great. So if you see this place, all that part of the board, that's what we're cleaning. Every single thing on this place, that's what we're cleaning. By the way, I'm using a very high zoom camera, so uh, that's why I'm showing you. It's actually this far away it's even a lot farther than this in real life but i'm just trying to zoom in so that you can see it right so so we continue so you're brushing pin for pin right and you're very gentle you're not particularly trying to squeeze it actually you're just brushing on top of it like this you're brushing on top of it like that, and then you do the same thing, just soft, mild gesture. Nothing too harsh. Make sure you're not harsh when you're doing this. I repeat, make sure you're not harsh when you're doing it. What you're looking out for is the teeth. I don't know if you can see that place that is brown. Right? Uh -huh. Can you see it's cleaning off? like that you can dip your brush into foil again and then drip it off and then you come back again and you're washing now because we are cleaning these pins that's why i don't like to use alcohol Especially the methylated spirit that we use in our Nigeria. It's called Moko methylated spirit. Because it distills into water, like I said. And when it distills into water, you can see how a pool of fuel collects at the base of that iron. Now, imagine if it doesn't dry and it distills into water. That's a short circuit. And don't forget, your board is basically an electronic circuit. Or an electric circuit. So if you're not careful... You leave a pool of water teeth like this and then you plug it. You're just likely going to start a fire. And if you're lucky, you're going to break the board. And you don't want either of those two things, right? So that's pretty much why we're careful. So you wash a couple of times. Ever so softly. Ever so softly. Then you wash like that carefully. So you're washing pin for pin. And you come to this pin, you wash again. And then you come to all these other pins, idle pins, you just wash them off. What we're getting rid of is collection of dust at the base of the pins. Right, so that's what we're trying to get rid of. And so you're washing carefully. Another place you also have to uh, put focus on is this chip, right? So the same thing can happen at times when you get error link fail. Uh, it's either maybe because this pin is too filthy, so you know you can't just because it's so dirty. There's really no way you can get to. It. If you look at this pin, I can see how dirty it is. So for places like this, I have to be slow, and then you have to do a thorough work. We'll come to why we have several kinds of brush in a minute, and you'll see it for yourself why we need those two other brushes. Because uh, you might be thinking, why are we then getting all those other brushes when this is the one we're using? Well, this one will do 
more like a general wash in those spaces that are like open like that but those other small brushes you see where this brush in my hand cannot reach those are the brushes that go there and then for the toothbrush uh, that one is necessary because of hard stains on the on the board especially ink stains you're not careful and all of that so you do that all the way till you have at least covered all the area if you want to remove this pin if you can you can just take this pin out you don't have to keep it right so let me zoom out again if you can you can just remove this pin right yeah you can remove the pin that's connector chip you can remove it and then also service it separately so i'm just going to drop it on the floor like that and then I'll, I'll zoom in again and then go to the MOSFET area. Go to the MOSFET area, which is this area. And then I clean this top. I see the leg pins as well. I'll clean the leg pins like that. And all of that. Then you make sure you cover as much area as possible. Clean every single leg of your board. Till whatever the color of your board, if it's blue, your board becomes blue. Some people send me their board picture. And it's looking brown because of dust. Uh, people like that should not complain why the board is just suddenly stops working. Some of you have a board like this and you have never had to wash it. Or service it in your entire lifetime well if that board has been working for many years you are just the lucky one because what dust does is that it coagulates on top of those pins and then it begins to activate rust especially when you add a bit of oxidation to it that is air you know air mixed with dust and all of that you know the thing just starts uh, getting rusty and once the pins get rusty and a couple more pins get rusty, you are on your way to losing your board. So if your office in a very your office is in a very dusty environment, uh, that is the time to even once in a year or twice in a year. And I purposely did this video so that you can know exactly what to do, right? It's not like you are going to scrub it the way you scrub teeth. No, you are just careful. If you see the way I'm doing it, I'm just very careful, very very careful, right? Alright, so let's go to the other smaller brushes. Why do we need them? Well, for crevices like this. Crevices like this. Crevices like this. So you dip it into foil. So it's for crevices like this. Like all these tiny little crevices that that fat brush cannot get to. These kind of teeth, for instance. Right? So you need a brush that can go there and do the heavy lifting for you i don't know if you can see that right like that you know small small crevices like that under the tear under the legs and small crevices like that that ideally your hand would not have reached with a big brush like that like that i don't know if you were able to see this carefully uh -huh. So all like small pins like that, wash through. Can you see how careful I'm doing it? And then the bristles of the brush is actually very soft. So you're not using hard brush I like iron. Don't use an iron brush. Use um, plastic bristles like that. Inside these holders, wash them carefully. If you can do this once a year or maybe twice a year or at best once in every two years you will save your board but again like i said this is a very careful affair so it's not something you are just you just reverse <laughs> you spoil that bottle if you're nigerian you understand what i just did so you keep like that until you're done at times it's not a bad idea to actually I'm trying to zoom in 
to that hole yeah so also the holes of this place that's why you need the small brush right so you're careful and then by the time you're done if you find you know areas that are sort of like difficult to wash off then you use the hard brush to kind of like peel it up especially when foil has softened those places but because of the way this brush is and the head you can see there's there's just some places it can't reach so in order not to damage those places that's why we use the hard brush that's why we use the small step brush right so just to do that final work and once you're done you know you might see maybe tiny smudges of of dust and all of that it doesn't mean that those smudges you must clean them thoroughly but this one will do that thorough sweep of whatever residue of dust and fuel is left right so it will more like help you to sweep them out and then get it ready and like i said you just have to be very careful so places like this and i suspect it's not properly washed so we can just go back to this guy and then do that work again so because liquid has a tendency to flow that's why we don't use water so imagine if this was water now that's how that water will flow under that board and then it will become very difficult to dry so you can see how the way the way this place was before i started cleaning it now you can see how clean it looks so this is something we are gunning for and once you're done you know you've done your best then you keep the board outside let it dry now don't put it under direct sunlight i don't know why i said that but don't do it <laughs> you know uh just put it in an airtight space and then just let it sit for a while these kind of services they good they you know they work well to prolong the life of your board and once you're done you should have something that looks like this back in the color and looks just as good as you wanted it and when it has dry for like an hour or two or three let it dry properly right so that there's no chemical reaction when you turn it on then you set it back into your machine and then your machine should start working all right that's it guys i hope this has helped you if it has i want you to hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn on the notification bell and then join our membership uh, to be a member of our channel means that every time you chat me on whatsapp i may not collect money from you and then i might have time to sit with you properly and answer your questions uh, when you join our membership you make our assisting you a lot easier because now you have become a loyal fan base and they are one of those that support us to continue making content online all right then i hope to see you in the next video take care Bye.